For people both new to learning about Chernobyl, and those familiar with the subject, it is a well-established fact that the elephant's foot is the most radioactive single object in the entire sarcophagus. But, as it seems to be with everything to do with Chernobyl, this is incorrect. The elephant's foot is only in third place. The title of second most radioactive object instead goes to part of the vertical corium flow that entered the upper floors of the bubbler pools. It and the corium flow that continued beneath, both called the heap, rivaled the elephant's foot for title of most radioactive corium mass, but both are dwarfed by the monster corium mass that spawned the heap and this video will seek to demonstrate how dangerous it and the heap are, but also allow you to follow the journey I had writing this script, where I learned a lot about the Corium masses and how easily deceived we all are by the stories both online and in documentaries. But first, we must actually establish what counts as a Corium mass. To break down why this is important, when the explosion occurred, and fuel was able to escape the bottom of the reactor, it initially piled up in the room immediately underneath this, which was numbered 305 stroke 2. The corium mass was able to escape through a hole in the wall of 304 stroke 3, where it ran havoc down a series of corridors. But how much corium is located in this singular mass? About 912 tons of the stuff. So, do we count this as our most radioactive corium mass? Well, we can't really, for a few reasons. One, it's just boring if that's the answer. But number two, the corium mass here is not as concentrated in radioactivity as, say, the elephant's foot. This is due to the fact that it has been spread out through these corridors at a low height, about 0.2 to 0.3 meters. And then during the construction of the sarcophagus, a layer of concrete has flowed through the area, which acts as both a shielding mechanism and forces people to crawl through narrow holes and passageways. However, overall, if it is safe enough for people to crawl along, effectively giving yourself the maximum possible dosage, it's probably safe. Comparatively, of course. For a similar reason, we can't really count any of it. The largest singular area of this corium mass, the one underneath the reactor, is covered by a layer of concrete that heavily limits the radiation dosage, that was there before it was discovered. We won't know just how truly lethal this spot is, until it is inevitably excavated while it is being removed. For now, the punch of radioactivity from the elephant's foot outweighs the shielded force of these masses. And finally, I lied to you. This is not a singular mass of corium, but rather small piles of it, that seem to have coalesced as it cooled. And these small piles are all individually much, much less radioactive than the elephant's foot, or the heaps. If we count them all together combined, it still wouldn't compare to any of these monsters. So, back to these corium flows. As I was saying, the corium masses flowed out of these corridors and then into a series of pipes. Some small piping would lead to what will become the elephant's foot. And while it was still molten, parts of the elephant's foot managed to drop down the stairwell behind it to the very ground floor of the reactor building. Although this doesn't change much. The elephant's foot, about 14 tonnes of pure corium, was supposedly putting out 10,000 rongens per hour when it was discovered. In other words, approaching for just 300 seconds would expose your body to more than 800 rongens of radiation, which is effectively a guaranteed lethal dose. However, by the year 2000, this radioactivity had declined to about 700 rongens at its maximum. And from these two values, we can work out the half-life of the elephant's foot. About 3.64 years. So, every three years and seven to eight months, the radioactivity of the elephant's foot will be cut in half. So, today, about six and a half half-lives later, 
we can estimate a radioactivity of... 8 Ronjans. No, this is... this is far too low. Sergei Koshalev, the man in this photo, has said that in 2016, the elephant's foot was outputting 100 Ronjans. Let's try using this number instead. From 700 to 100 Ronjans in 16 years gives us a half-life of about... 5.7 years. Now, using that value, we can go back in time and add on half-lives from 2000 to 1986, giving us a new estimated radioactivity of 3,840 Rongens. It's quite a bit smaller than the 10,000 Rongens, but I think I know where they got that number from. In 1986, when they collected their samples of the elephant's foot, they estimated the radioactivity of these small samples, took the mass of the elephant's foot, and multiplied it up. Their radiation counters would simply go off the scale, so they used these values. 4,000 or 10,000 Rongens doesn't mean much, both will kill you quickly. But the elephant's foot has quite the low surface area to volume ratio so a lot of the radioactivity gets shielded by the concrete that makes up the mass, which will become significant later on as we approach the most radioactive object in the sarcophagus. Now, with a value of 3,840 Rongens, it would take about 853 seconds, so a little over 14 minutes, for a lethal dose of 800 Rongens. Also, Please keep in mind that these calculations here are rough, and probably out by some 25% or so. By around 2000, more than 90% of the radioactive material was cesium-137, which means the half-lives will be extended out a bit, but not by a massive amount if we wind back the clock and use care when doing so. And if we ignore this winding back of the clock, the objects coming up are still far more radioactive than the elephant's foot was when the data was recorded. Now we've cleared up the elephant's foot story, let's take a look at the other major corium flow, the one that came through a series of pipes from the floor below the reactor to the steam suppression pools, or the bubbler pools. The purpose of these pipes was to transport steam that escaped from a ruptured channel into a network of corridors beneath the reactor, where it would condense into water instead of doing something a lot more dangerous, like flooding the reactor building. Instead, these pipes transported the corium straight down into the lower levels, where it would disperse and form the vertical corium flows that form both the heaps and the number one radioactive mass, which is apparently named the China Syndrome, after the movie about a nuclear meltdown. We'll compare the radioactivity of all these masses in 1986, to give us a good scale, and focus only on the highest recorded point of the mass, instead of the entire net mass, to give the elephant's foot a fighting chance. We'll also start with the larger heap, because we have information here to determine the half-lives of all these masses, since they're composed of the same material. A brown ceramic. Now, this mass here is very distinct for looking very evil in all the photos of it. In radiation measurements, we can see it measuring 1,020 Rongens per hour in 1998, and 2,040 Rongens in 1989. By luck, we have an exact half-life of 9 years. So, let's dial back the clock to see what our half-life in 1986 is. One third of a half-life will equal to 5,140 Rongens, absolutely destroying the elephant's foot's half-life of 3,840 Rongens, and enough to kill you in 560 seconds, or just over 9 minutes. The smaller heap, that continued to descend from the upper heap, was measuring just 490 Rongens per hour in 1999. I say just, 490 Ronchins per hour are absolute madness, but with these numbers it's just child's play. Anyway, using the same 9 year half life of the larger heap, we get an estimated 1986 value of radioactivity 
of 1,333 Rongens. Again, very small numbers compared to the other two masses formed. But now we turn to the China Syndrome mass. As you can probably assume for being a mass literally called the China Syndrome, we're dealing with a massive piece of corium, and it does feel like an entire nuclear reactor in size. Where the elephant's foot was just 14 tonnes, and the larger heap 110 tonnes, the China Syndrome is 230 tonnes of pure corium. As it shattered down through the reactor into the pit, it spread out to fill all three corridors of the uppermost steam suppression region. But how radioactive are we talking here? Well, in 1997, the most radioactive point of the China Syndrome was putting out 3,460 rongens per hour, almost as much as the elephant's foot was putting out in 1986 according to our calculations. Already a monster, but you know what we're going to do. We're going to wind back the clock. 11 years, so 1.1111 etc half-lives before, and we get 7,344 rongens per hour. What a beast. Rivaling as what many claim the elephant's foot was outputting at the time. Lethal in 392 seconds, six and a half minutes, it has comfortably earned the crown as the most radioactive object in Chernobyl, as it did in the 1990s and 2000s, and will hold that record for many decades to come.